Let's talk about xanthan gum and gar gum. Are they both keto friendly? And if you had a choice, which one is better or worse? Let's start with xanthan gum. It's used in a lot of different foods as a food thickener uh, to provide texture. Uh, they use it in recipes to make bread because it replaces like the gluten. Uh, it's an additive. Here's the problem. It's usually made from corn, glucose, or even soy. So if you were to consume this, you want to make sure it's non-GMO, okay? If it's non-GMO, it'll be okay. But if it's GMO, you don't want to consume it because of the corn and the soy. And then who knows where they got the glucose from right there. Now there's a certain bacteria called Xanthomonas compensatus. If I spelt that right, I have no idea. But you can see the name Xanthom, Xanthom, that's where it comes from. So this bacteria ferments corn, glucose, or soy, obviously the carbohydrate in those three, and it gives you this gum, okay? So one half of a teaspoon is 1.6 grams, equals one carb, but it also has one gram of fiber, giving a zero net carb. So this will not affect your blood sugar. So yes, it is keto friendly, but make sure it's a non-GMO source, okay? Now, gar gum, what's that? It comes from the gar bean and a half a teaspoon, 1.5 grams, only will give you one gram of carb and one gram of fiber, also giving you a zero net carb. So this is good as well. So these are very similar, but the big difference is the source. So just make sure if you do this, it is non-GMO. This one is gonna be non-GMO naturally because they don't genetically modify this bean. All right, so if you haven't seen my video on acceptable fluids on a ketogenic diet, uh, you might wanna check that one out. That's a real popular one. I think I have like 4 million views. Check it out right here.